Today we're going to go over how you can use multiple cameras on your clipper install to monitor your 3D printer, either using mainsail or fluid. What's up everyone, Chris here. A couple of weeks ago, my buddy Dave Wilson said he was having problems setting up multiple cameras on his clipper install. I don't know if he was using mainsail or fluid, but we're going to take a look at both. And if my buddy Dave has a problem, then it's my problem too. So today I'm going to walk you through all the steps that it takes to get multiple cameras set up using fluid, mainsail, and ultimately crow's nest. Crow's nest is the piece of software they use to serve these camera streams. It's not very difficult to get all this set up, but if you don't know what you're looking at, it can be kind of confusing. But we're going to get all of that solved, and you should be able to use multiple cameras to monitor your 3D printer. So, let's head to the computer. So here we are back in Putty. The first thing we need to talk about is Crow's Nest. It is the add-on that makes it easiest to add cameras. It keeps track of all this, and it works for mainsail and fluid. But you have to get it configured just so. So that's mainly what we're focused on. We gotta get the cameras set up inside Crow's Nest to make them both work. And as we talked before, with our MKS board install, we use the MKS user ID to log on. For this board, it's MKS password maker base. That's what we just did. If you do an ls in that home directory, mks home directory, this is where your clipper install is including your crow's nest install. Now from MakerBase by default, they do install it. The easiest way to install it, if you don't have it, is hopefully you use Kaya to get clipper installed. If you cd into Kaya, you can just run that Kaya sh. Inside that menu, you do see we have Crow's Nest, but if you do one, if you didn't have it, enter your root password. Number 12, you can select and install it right here. Again, we already have it installed. If you didn't use Kaya, you can install it manually. It's not that big a deal, but Kaya makes things a lot easier, as I've described before. So we'll exit out of here. I will leave a link to this page, but this is the command set that you need to run to install crow's nest by itself. You just changed your home directory, run the git clone command to download the crow's nest project, change into directory, and then do the make install. That'll get it installed, but you do need to update your moonraker.comp file to add all this information so that it utilizes crow's nest. No matter if you had mainsail or fluid, to update that file, all you'd have to go, go into the front end, go to configuration, you should have moonraker.config here and just add in that crow's nest information right here in this file. Just like they show you here. And then you'll be good to go. Since we already have crow's nest installed, either by Kaya, it came with the MKS board, we can go ahead and move to the cameras. So let's see what cameras Dave has that we need to get installed. So these are both USB cameras. I believe Dave said he just got these off of AliExpress. They're very inexpensive. He's printed this housing for this one. You can see it's just on a PCB and it connects to a USB cable. And then he's got this smaller one. I'm guessing he wants to look at the nozzle while it's printing, something like that. It's just on a PCB. Both of these should work, but we need them to work together. So let's just start with one camera. Let's start with this larger one here. This is going to work with Pi, Big Tree Tech Pi, anything that you can run Linux on, it's going to be the same process. But we'll just plug this camera into our MKS board into one of the USB ports. Remember, we have three on this board, so we can utilize this 3.0 over here if we want to, because we do have a Wi-Fi dongle. But we'll just plug the first one in. And if we go back to Fluid, we'll go to Settings, go over here down to Camera, and we'll just hit Add Camera. Let's call it cam1. We'll do underscore red, just so we know which one we're dealing with, because this one has a red housing. You can change things up based on your camera here and just hit add. This is the default camera zero. I'm just gonna delete this for the purpose of this video. You can probably use it, but I wanna name them so we know which one we're dealing with. So I'm just gonna delete this one. With that done, we'll go back to the home page. If the camera is working, you should be able to see it right here. Most of the time when I start using a brand new camera, I have to reboot the host, which isn't any big deal. Just come over here, hit host, and hit reboot. And we'll wait for a second for it to come back up. And after the reboot is complete, all I did was hit refresh on the browser, 
and there's camera number one, pointed at a good looking Vinci. So one camera, no problem at all. What if we want to run two? I think the best way to understand this is to just jump in to the crowsnest.conf file. So in Fluid, we'll go to Configuration, crowsnest.conf. And they give you some breadcrumbs in here on how to do all of this. You'll see this is Cam 1, the configuration we're using right now. We just need to support Camera 2, but you can't do both devices at the same time with the same settings. So from here, I'm just going to close this. We're going to go back to the board, and I'll plug in our second camera over here in this 3.0 port. Remember, that's this one right here. Then I'm going to go to Settings, back to Cameras, and let's just add. And let's call this one Cam 2. And for now, just so I can show you, I'm going to leave this camera URL the same, but we're going to have to update it. But this will make more sense. So I just hit Add. And then we're going to come up here to the ellipse here and just reboot the host. Now, you probably don't have to do all these reboots. I'm trying to step you through this to show you how it works. Uh, you can probably just do one reboot at the end when you're done configuring this. Just trying to give you the lay of the land. So we'll reboot for now. You can see after the reboot, it sees both of our camera feeds, but it thinks it's the same camera. So we need to get this one over here onto the new cam. The easiest way I know how to do this is by device name. You can probably go through the log and figure this out, but I think it's just as easy to run some commands over here on SSH to get this done. So back to Putty, we're just going to do an ls forward slash dev forward slash v 4L, video for Linux. From there, we're going to do by ID. And here's all the cameras we currently have plugged in. If you don't know which one's which, you can unplug them and just rerun this command. So let's unplug one of them just so I can show you the difference. We'll unplug camera two that we just plugged in, and I'll rerun the command. So this one is the first one, the red cam. So we'll just remember that. We'll plug our camera back in, our second one. We'll rerun that command. And there's our second camera, this IC Spring camera. So to make sure that you keep these separate, here's what I would do. Take this index zero, you don't want index one, that could be a different stream. Take this index zero, we'll just copy it, Head back to Fluid, go to Configuration, crowsnest.conf, and Camera 1, the one that's currently working, we're just going to update this video device. Dev v4l slash by dash id, and then we'll paste in that camera name. You can set the resolution based on the camera. Uh, the frames per second, whatever you need to. You can also change up the streamer. MJPEG works for me, sometimes Ustreamer works better, but you have choices. Also remember, this camera's on 8080. Now what I'm gonna do is take this whole thing, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste it down here below. We're just gonna call it camera two. And this time we're gonna put this one on port 8081. Notice up here it tells you which stream you're acting upon, depending on what port you use. So remember, we're going to use webcam 2. We'll see that here in just a second. 8081, and we need to update this device name. So I'm going to go back to Putty. I'm going to get our second camera device name right here. And I'm just going to update this line. It's exactly the same, just the different camera name. And there's our configuration. So we can save this and close. And then we'll go back to settings, cameras, and like I said before, we have this red cam. It's good. We've already updated it. We know which device we're pointing at. It has the webcam stream action right here. So that's what it needs to be. The second one, however, we're going to edit that. We're just going to put a two in here and then a forward slash. So it uses the other stream that we just set up and we'll hit save. Back to the dashboard. It can't see that second camera, but a reboot is gonna fix that. So one last reboot to bring it up. And there's both of our camera feeds good to go. 
You can see them both at the same time, and you can do this with a handful of cameras if you want to. Just be careful. The capacity of the CPU, all that makes a difference. It might start to get a little laggy if you add too many streams. So there's that in Fluid. You can do the same exact thing in Mainsail. You can see right now in Mainsail, we don't have any webcams. But because we have Mainsail and Fluid installed on the same configuration, they're going to share config files. Remember, these are just front ends to help you control the printer and edit these files. It's the same base configuration. So if you go to machine, this crowsnest.conf, it's the same file. Here's the cameras we added. They're already set up with device names, good to go. All you would have to do is go add them in the settings tab. But if you have mainsail and not fluid, it's the same exact process that we just did for fluid. The buttons are just in a di little different location. So here in mainsail, we're gonna come up here to the cogs. We'll go to webcams. We already have our camera names. We just need to fix them up a bit. The only real difference in between fluid and mainsail is mainsail is a little bit more particular. It requires you to have a snapshot URL. It's not that big a deal. We already have webcam and webcam two set up. We just need to tell mainsail there is a snapshot location. So we're just going to take this stream, the video URL, and put it down here in the URL snapshot box and just change stream to snapshot. And we'll hit update webcam. And then we'll do the same thing for cam two. Just copy it, paste it down here, change to snapshot, and update. With those updates, we can close this, go back to dashboard. With a quick refresh, we now have our two camera feeds just like we did in Fluid. Just a little tweak here to get main cell up and running, but it works almost exactly the same way. And that is how you can do multiple cameras with Clipper mainsail and fluid. Hopefully this helps monitor your 3D print. So there it is. Now we have multiple cameras for monitoring our 3D printer with our clipper install, whether we're using mainsail or fluid. Again, it's not a really difficult process to get it set up, but you have to know what you're looking for. Plus, being able to get those device IDs, that really helps separate them, so it's the same way every time, no matter how you plug them into your board. Also, there's a lot of different options here. We used MJPEG Streamer as the encoder today, but you can also use different ones. I've had luck with Ustreamer, but you can change that up based on the board you're using and maybe the cameras you're using. It might like one or the other. Lots of different things you can do, but this should be the base install to get you up and running. So hopefully this was helpful. That is it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.